Welcome everybody, we're back. Make a Monday is back. I'm back from vacation. I didn't even get a tan, but that doesn't matter because today we've got a cool project, don't we Bjorn? Yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. We are putting the smart into a dirt cheap mailbox. And what that means is the mailbox will be able to tell us when we get mail and it'll recognize when we remove the mail. Uh, we're gonna show you exactly how we do that, so let's get started. So Bjorn, you've uh, already prepared the mailbox for yep. us. Do you want to explain a little bit about what you've what you've got in here? What what parts do you need to make something like this work? Super simple. So this is a, the cheapest mailbox we found on Amazon. <laughs> we need uh, two of those switches here. Mm -hmm. This is a normally closed switch, so it actually is pressed when you open the flap, mm -hmm. so electrically. Okay. Same here. Um, if you open that door, you also have got this small switch here. Um, same thing. You don't see any electronics here because um, we've got a small problem. This is a metal box and we want to use Wi-Fi. And as you might know, this doesn't work well yeah. together. So um, there are two options uh, at home. I've got the same and I just place uh, the controller exactly behind this plastic okay. plastic window here uh, so that the Wi-Fi signals get out. That actually works. So um, you can still use it. Your, your sign or something like this uh -huh. to, to hide it. Um, other option would be, and this is what we opted here for, is uh, to just use a cable and put the box below or something like this or mm. somewhere behind. It. So that's, that's the easiest thing. And for us, it's, it's quite easy, so. It's a cool project and everything, but Bjorn, the big question is, why a smart mailbox? Because you can. But uh, there are different reasons. For example, if, you're, if your mailbox is far away from your house mm -hmm. and you want to know if, it, if you need to go there, yeah. uh, other reasons would be, for example, um, yeah, you want to have a notification in your house, so you want to trigger things or something like this in your in your smart home, mm -hmm. and uh, or you want to have a statistics over your mailman when he comes every day. So if he's you too late, or something to track like this. the mail delivery statistics. For a smart mailbox, we need to know when the the top flap is opened and mm -hmm. also when when this uh, this flap is open. So that means you need to get two signals, yeah, um, and, or you need the, the the microcontroller to recognize two signals, right? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, uh, last episodes we used the ESP8266 uh, for, for the temperature logger and so on. Mm -hmm. And uh, this can only handle one wake-up signal. So you can actually actually see if if the top door was opened or the lower door or something like this. So for that reason, this time we uh, use another one, uh, the ESP32, which is a successor. Okay. So um, this one here can handle 15 or 20 wake-up signals. So you can actually use 15 pins or so for waking up okay. and can later on see which pin it was. So that's the point. Next thing is um, your mailbox might be somewhere in front of your house or of your garden entry yeah, yeah. 500 meters before your house or something yeah. like this. So um, you need to run it on battery. Yeah. And that's the next thing here. Um, battery driven solutions you have always, you always have to cope with uh, power consumption. And um, so I brought some, some of the boards here and uh, there are a lot of things you have to consider. For example, um, ESP8266, uh, if you put it to deep sleep, is quite okay. 150 microamps or so. So okay. that would work for several months uh, with one battery. Um, problem is, uh, usually you get these boards here. So this one here, you have to, to cope with, with external parts and so on. So I've brought something here with me. Uh, this is quite a mess. So you have you have to do a lot of things to make it run. And uh, this one here would work. Yeah. Uh, if you got time and patience, you could, you you could do, do that. You could do that, yes. Yeah. And it's a little bit more complicated because you have no USB controller here. So you need to some programmer here for right. this. So mess. Yeah. So um, can be done, but it's not so easy. Uh, other 
Other solution would be to use one of these development boards. You get them for cheap, so that's no problem too. Problem is most of them are not well designed for battery. Uh, all of these here have a battery connector, but um, most of them forget to switch off the USB controller while in deep sleep, so it takes 10 milliamps, which yeah. is 500 times more. Uh, so um, this would run two days on a battery. So yeah. Yeah. not ideal. Not ideal. There's one exception. Uh, this one here is the DF Robot uh, Fire Beetle ESP32. Um, they made it quite well. So they switched off the USB controller while in deep sleep or made it a little bit different. This one here actually works out of the box. Okay. That's the reason why we use it. Great. So um, super easy. Just hook up a battery. Uh, can be programmed with, with USB and uh, no external parts. Oh, done. Perfect. Sold. All right, so Björn, next step is to flash the microcontroller, microcontroller right? Yeah. Okay. How do we do that? So, um, yeah, I prepared some code. Um, again, um, we're, we're running on batteries, so we need to make sure that uh, the wake-up time is as short as possible. Mm -hmm. So it just needs to connect to the Wi-Fi, push the message, and then go, go back, back to sleep. sleep. Yeah. That's the point. For that reason, last time we used a very comfortable library so where you can put your IP address and mm. so on and stuff like this. This time, um, as short as possible, so we are just connecting to the Wi-Fi with a static IP. So no uh, DHCP or something like mm. this because that takes three seconds or so. And uh, that's too much. We need 200 milliamps uh, when it's on. So you actually, five seconds or so makes two months more lifetime on battery. Wow, that's, wow. that's the point. So, um, I prepared some code, so you just need to put in your uh, password, uh, your Wi-Fi password, your MQTT password from your home assistant, and uh, that's it. Okay. So we need to flash it. All right. So let's do it. Okay, first thing is we need to flash uh, the microcontroller. For that, we just need to replace the passwords and the username of our Wi-Fi and so on in the code. So that's all on the top of the code. And um, yeah, afterwards just flash the chip. So use the Arduino ID and just uh, find the correct controller. So uh, make sure that the Fire Beetle is here. There are some instructions in the GitHub repository uh, which board URL to use. And uh, because you need a special board URL for the Fire Beetle, uh, even if you already got ESP32 stuff installed, uh, upload speed and so on, um, picks a correct COM port and afterwards uh, just hit upload. So um, take some time for compiling and if it's ready uh, it should be ready to use. Uh, quite important after it has been flashed um, you need to reset that chip. Sometimes uh, code doesn't start automatically after resetting and that's it. Okay, uh, Sean, so now we just flashed our microcontroller. Next thing is to hook it up to okay. our uh, cool Mabel. Let's hook it up. Yeah. So, um, again, we got three wires here. Mm -hmm. um, we are using the internal pull down resistors of this microcontroller, so we don't need any external parts. Okay. And uh, so, just this is a common wire for both switches. Looks like round, but isn't, because we use pull-down switches, we connect it to the 3V3 port, so it's the plus voltage or 3.3 volt voltage. And the other ones to the I.O. pins we just used in our software for waking up, okay. uh, which is, uh, I guess, uh, the red wire goes to I.O. 25 and the other one to 26. Um, we got the schematics for this on the GitHub. Yeah, we have it on the GitHub. So check um, that. Quite important, uh, we need to use the IOs 25, 26, something like this, not, not the 30, 34 to 39, okay. because they do not have pull up resistors, but um, it's all in the code, so super easy. So we just hooked it up, and um, I still have the uh, terminal running in my Arduino ID, so we can have a look if everything works. Right. So um, we're just pressing reset, for example. <coughs> <clears throat> so then you should see only a small uh, connection because it directly goes to deep sleep if okay. it's not wake, right. wake up by a switch. And so now the mailman comes, yeah, mailman delivering comes. some mail. So it's connected and it already sends a message. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. uh, let's try the other one. Use the other flap. 
And okay. that's it. That's wonderful. It. That's it. Great. Wonderful. Okay, so that's it for this episode of Maker Monday. We've set it up, we've got the two sensors in place. Uh, we're getting signals when someone opens the mailbox, either the top flap or the bottom flap. Uh, but of course we need to do something with that information. So Bjorn, the next step is? Home Assistant. Hook it up to Home Assistant. Join us for the next episode. If you wanna see when we put out new episodes, subscribe to our channel. And also, uh, how would you use these two signals? Maybe you have some ideas of uh, how you would make use of this information that would be send, uh, sent to Home Assistant. We'll show you how we do it next time. Refrigerator door, for example. Refrigerator door, for example. See you next time. Mm -hmm.